Good evening, everybody. I am the Cynic. Sandman's recent video, The Tag Team, has hit home with me lately, so I figured I'd take a bit to talk about my own personal experiences for a moment and what my biggest influences were to becoming the man going his own way that I am today. The highest influences in my MGTOW life were my sister and my stepfather. My sister is one of the kinds of women who'd be described as the worst of the worst. Manipulative, lazy, inconsiderate, uncaring, incompetent, selfish, and worst of all, a mother. Of three. From an early age, I observed my older sister, since she was the eldest of my siblings. For anonymity, we'll call her D. D wasn't the best of children, even when we were younger. While she did have her redeeming qualities and traits, she was an out-of-control child. Even though we believed in spankings my family and gave them with impunity, she called child protective services against my parents after they tried to lay a hand on her when she learned about that at school. This resulted in a revolving door of coming back home and going back to foster care for the better part of about three years, where her behavior only continued to deteriorate. Disobedience, late nights out, Visible disrespect, running away from home, and all manner of things that you'd expect from a child on Maury or Jerry Springer. It got so bad that at the age of 15 my mother couldn't take any more and threw her out of the house to go live with my upper middle class grandparents in Colorado. We'll come back to her later, but at this point is where I'd like to talk about my stepfather and how he comes into the picture. Now, before we get to my father, it's worth saying that most of my younger years were lived in relative peace and comfort. I was coddled, coddled as a child by my mother to the point where I could only cook ramen for myself if I got hungry or make a bowl of cereal. I had a nanny for most everything and didn't face that many challenges that would probably have made me a bit more assertive and outgoing. This isn't, this wasn't, if it wasn't for my dad, I'm pretty sure I'd be one of those uppity, know-it-all liberal types who never worked a day in his life. Playing chess and watching TV were as active as I got back then. But I digress. My stepdad and I met when I was nine years old. My first impression of him simply was the word tall, since he towered over me and everyone else in the room. At first, I was intimidated. As... Uh, most of the men I encountered in my life were a bit more tame, though still relatively good people. Where most would speak softly to me and tell me they'd take care of it in pertinence to anything I was doing that would be considered dangerous, my dad had no problem quirking up around and saying, let the boy do it himself. <laughs> to give you an example, when we went out to eat before he actually married my mother, my mom would always cut my steak up for me and put it on a plate for me to eat. This did always cause me a little bit of discouragement, seeing kids younger than me cutting their own meat while I still had mine cut from me as if I were a toddler, but my dad wouldn't have it. He took both the knife and the steak from my mom and gave them both back to me. After, gave a quick demonstration on how to cut it, and I followed through succinctly. Oddly, my mother was a wreck the entire time, but I didn't care. I was proud and excited to be holding a knife and using it. At that point, I knew the coddling I received before the cha before and the challenges I both wanted and dreaded would come. And they did. They sure did. When I was too old for my mother to keep me in line, my father was there to put me back in my place and make me a better person for it. He, taught, he took me fishing, taught me how to work on cars, how to use a hammer, how to mow lawns, how to clean bathrooms, how to grill, how to catch, scale, disembowel, and cook fish, a bit about economics, ethics, and most importantly, he taught me how to be a man. If I made a mistake, he showed me what I did wrong and helped me clean it up. If I need to help with something or finding something, he either had a trick or a method to get the job done. All of this, af all of this after he taught me how to cut a steak. Funny, really. I never really thought about the things he taught me until I made this video. But I digress. Fast forwarding to our move to Colorado. Another man who is deserving of mention is my grandfather. He was a kinder and more easygoing man. I've only ever heard him say the word fuck twice in my life, and it would have been a third time if he were alive to see the Bron how the Broncos played in the Super Bowl this last season. 
When we moved here, I lived with my parents and my sister lived with my grandparents. We'd usually go over to my grandparents' house every Sunday for a family get-together. As time went on, I noticed a common theme between the genders within my kin. My grandmother, my mother, and sister would constantly argue and fight over stuff I didn't care about, while my dad, grandpa, and myself would go downstairs and watch TV, and wait for the three generations of bitches to tire themselves out. <clears throat> the women in my family were pretty passive-aggressive and worked on the passive-aggressive level, doing everything they can to take nice jabs while managing to keep plausible deniability. But what always seemed to start the issue was my sister baiting for whatever bullshit she wanted to bring up to stir drama. For the simple reason that she was the eldest of my siblings did my grandmother put up with her, and still does to this day. <clears throat> After a series of events, however, stealing money, staying out late, sneaking out, and having an adult over to have sex with her when she was 16, my grandfather had enough and threw her out. A few years later, when my parents put a mortgage on a house, she came to live with us again, for a little bit. Though, now she was, now she was 18 and became pregnant with the daughter of a loser who worked part-time at a minimum wage place who still lived with his parents with the full-on intention of keeping the baby. Even though neither had a decent job or any means of supporting themselves and had no business being parents, they wanted to bring an innocent and unwitting, and unwitting child into the world. And to put this into context about the guy, he kidnapped my sister's daughter and held a box cutter to her chest when we tried to get him her away from him. And trust me when I say, I wouldn't be have believed it if I hadn't seen it for myself. Through all of the moral lessons I learned through her about being grateful to those who care for you and love you, this was one of the bigger lessons I learned about women from her. When she had a baby, she went to live with my grandmother. And since my grandfather uh, passed away about a year earlier, he wasn't there to set her to face the consequences of her actions. If it wasn't for her daughter we would never have let her stay here either. But we did, and eventually, our love for the baby didn't keep my sister here. It didn't keep our tolerance levels up. She had to go. Later on, she became pregnant with another man's child up in Idaho. This during a time when I was having problems finding work and with my parents. I decided to go up there as well, since I had little luck finding a job. About a weekend, my sister and her her then husband kicked me out to the homeless shelter, where I worked as at many plants through temp agencies. This fostered <clears throat> frosted me a bit, but she offered me a place to live for three months. She, because she offered me a place to live for three months. This is where I learned again that she may have been family, but she was still that sister. The thing was, I had no complaints, and it was just a pack your shit out of get the fuck out of here from out of nowhere. Fuck. Though it was only a few months before she complained to me about physical abuse that she was receiving from her husband, only a few months after that she complained, and how it had gone on since the start of their relationship, I told her to leave and go back home. Big mistake on my part, because I followed after. Today, she has another husband and a third child. This man she is currently married to makes 60000 a year and was living very comfortably before he met her. Though I did view a little bit of the process of her courtship, and the angry, screaming, drama-filled woman child she really was, very well camouflaged under a sweet, gentle, easy-going woman disguise. It was like she was a totally different person than what she really was. Her skills in acting, deception, and baiting are rivaled to that of a sociopath. As I expected, the minute she married and was pregnant with his child, the spoiled, lazy, entitled, angry woman child she really was came out and had her way with his finances. Today, he's barely able to, able to keep his head above water, and their family continues to go out to dinners that they can't afford and enroll their kids into activities that they don't have the capital to pursue. One of the biggest lessons that both of my parents had taught me and how, was how to manage my finances and steer clear of people prone to drama. And looking at the life of my sister and the teachings of both my mother and stepfather, I 
can see why. But one of the biggest lessons I learned from my stepdad didn't really come from him trying to teach it to me. It was something I figured out. Women nurture children, but men make them grow up. As for me, well, I still live with my parents, but technically they live with me since I'm the one who pays the mortgage on the house. But some people may call me a loser for that, but you know, they took care of me for 18 years, I kind of owe them. And call me a loser all you want, but what you can't call me is in debt up to my eyeballs. I am the cynic, everybody. Have a nice day.